Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just give a little preamble. You know, I was on Twitter the other day and I was reading people who posted. I even retweeted one of the tweets uh, that I was losing my mind. That I was making crazy picks. One guy wrote that he might have to stop following me because my last few picks were simply outrageous. Right? For those who don't know. I've suggested that Amir Khan is a live underdog against Floyd Mayweather, right, among other picks. Well, understand the one constant in boxing <clears throat> is that in the moment, fighters who are at the top of the game are always viewed as unbeatable, right? Right now, think about those in your mind who are among the best pound for pound. You know, at the end of the day, everyone's mortal, right? No one here gets out alive. Underdogs win things like the Super Bowl recently and heavyweight titles, right? Just food for thought. Let's go through some of the best fighters in the sport by consensus. Did you know that Andre Ward, the 168 pound champion, was dropped by Darnell Boone? Did you know that Adonis Stevenson, the 175 pound champion, right, fighter of the year for some publications, was not only dropped by the same Darnell Boone, he actually got stopped by Darnell Boone. <clears throat> Did you know that Darnell Boone actually went the distance with John Pascal. Very few people know who Darnell Boone is. But Darnell Boone was a challenger who was hungry just like Alex Lipe. Right? The great Floyd Mayweather. Forget what I think. Right? Understand that officially Floyd beat Oscar De La Hoya by split decision. I can tell you I was at the MGM Sportsbook the night of the fight. Several people streamed into the Sportsbook right after the fight, which took place at the MGM Arena. Right, I can tell you that several of them were openly claiming that Mayweather won the fight by robbery. Right, now I thought Mayweather won that fight clearly. Just one man's opinion. But just understand there's another opinion. Right? If Mayweather's that unbeatable, how do you get the split decision? And understand, this is different than the Canelo scoring because, as I said at the time, and I encourage you to go on YouTube and read what was written at the time, many people thought De La Hoya won the fight. Well, one thing's clear to me, in my opinion, Mayweather got dropped by Zab Judah. Right? We can debate it. You can look at the video. People are saying their knees hit together. I'm just telling you, if his name wasn't Floyd Mayweather, that knockdown would have been obvious. In other words, Floyd Mayweather is mortal just like everyone else, right? There are mo there, <laughs> whereas legacy-wise, there are immortals in boxing, right? In the real world, all of us will taste our mortality at one time or another. Now, let's talk about Vladimir Klitschko. Right now, when I mention his name, everyone's thinking, oh my goodness, he's unbeatable. How long has he been heavyweight champ? But yet he got stopped multiple times. Right? Different fighters. Ross Purity beat him in his backyard. Right? Corey Sanders, that's a demolition. Layman Brewster, he hits the canvas face first. 
Sam Peter didn't beat him, just knocked him down multiple times, right? You're talking about a guy who, again, is mortal, right? Now, styles make fights. This video is really intended for hardcore gamblers because, of course, what we're doing here is we're hedging the play. We're looking at a fight between a champion and a contender, and we're just doing a numbers game to try to figure out whether there is any way we can bet on a fight that right now, on February the 13th, 2014, is listed on oddschecker.com under, I believe it's William Hill or some casino like that as having Vladimir Klitschko as a 100 to 1 favorite. Think about it, right? According to this outfit, if these two fighters fought 101 times, Klitschko would win 100 of those matches. In my opinion, that's not the way life works. Just like Sonny Banks dropped Ali in an earlier generation, just like Mike Tyson got dropped by Buster Douglas, I'm just here to tell you that when a world-class competitor faces a champion, Right, if a Darnell Boone gets in the ring with an Andre Ward, there are going to be moments where Darnell Boone's on top. Right, You get two men, one guy can be the better fighter, but the other guy's going to have his day, sometimes during the month. Right, So, with the odds so crazy, and let me point out, that William Hill is an extreme outfit on this fight. Betfair has Klitschko as a 14 to 1 favorite. Right? Think about it. Well, my point is simply this. Just close your eyes for a moment and imagine what kind of fighter would give Vladimir Klitschko problems. Right? What are the holes in Vladimir Klitschko's game? I've been saying for a while here, and Klitschko's proven me wrong that he has certain holes in his game that someone clever could exploit. Now let me just argue to you that Vladimir Klitschko is not the best inside. If you look at the Alexander Povetkin tape, you're going to see that when Povetkin gets inside, Klitschko just grabs him, grabs him in a headlock a lot of the times. Klitschko's not a guy who, when you get inside, he shortens up his punches and he's throwing short punches. That's not him. He's not comfortable inside. Now, the other day they had a press conference where Klitschko faced off against Lipe. And I'm just here to tell you that sometimes height differences are dangerous to the taller fighter. Right? History is replete with very successful, very successful, shorter heavyweights, right? The guy who Jack Johnson beat for the title, I think it's uh, Jess Willard, but double check me on that, right? Was much taller than Dempsey. Rocky Marciano, shorter guy, many guys he fought were taller than him. The great smoking Joe Fraser was a shorty, right? Mike Tyson was shorter than many of the guys he fought, right? Understand that sometimes a lack of height gives a guy an advantage because a taller fighter might not be able to find him or to get leverage on punches, to throw power punches that far down right now let me just say Lipe has a punch that's intriguing here it's his right uppercut if you want to see him flash it look at Lipe against Dennis Boystoff right he flashes it often it's the kind of punch that he's able to get off 
when he's right up on you. Now he's a shorter guy who can bend, who is a warrior. I'll agree, he's had some fights where he's gotten blown out. No question about it. Personally, I myself believe that Vladimir Klitschko should win this fight. But I believe there's a case to be made at the odds being offered by some of these casinos for Lipe, right? If Lipe can get inside and if he times that uppercut right when Vladimir Klitschko is trying to grab him in a clinch, Lipe could have success. Right, it's the same kind of uppercut that Mike Tyson flashed. The difference is, with Tyson, he could throw the uppercut with both hands. With Lipe, it's his right hand. Right, my point though is, it only takes one good punch to win a title. Right, also because Lipe is shorter. And because Lipe doesn't have much of a jab, because he's throwing hooks and needs to get inside, I believe that increases the chances of a knockout in this fight. Right? In other words, Vladimir Klitschko won't have to go looking around the ring for Lipe. Lipe is going to have to force the action right up on him. I believe that's more bare for us because Vladimir Klitschko has gone the distance recently in some fights. I think the public is starting to expect these fights to all go the distance. Lipe went the distance against ben Dennis Boistoff. I think the public thinks this fight's going to go the distance. I disagree. And so, given these odds, Right, Patty Power, some casino, someplace. Right now has Klitschko to win by knockout at 16 to 1. Think about it. Right, Lipe to win by knockout is 22 to 1. If you believe like I do, that this fight is not going to go the distance that somebody is getting knocked out then one possible play and I understand we're swimming up tide but I'll tell you what I don't want to follow the crowd I want to beat the casino right understand in general the crowd subsidized the casino I want the casino to subsidize me if based on patty powers odds and you're gonna have to shop around for odds to make the hedge work if I were to bet 16 on Klitschko to win $1, and if I were to bet $1 on Lipe to win by KO, to win $22, then understand that if Lipe shocks the world, and let's be real here, it wouldn't be the first time that's happened. Wasn't Ali a huge underdog against Liston the first time they fought? If Lipe shocks the world, and gets off that uppercut inside and drops Klitschko, right? I think Lipe could only win by KO. Then off of those bets, 16 on Klitschko, 1 on Lipe, right? You would net 22 minus 16. You would net 6 bucks. Right? That's all I'm saying. Right? You literally net six bucks on a fight that right now, odds wise, looks unbettable. Right? Think it over. But understand the risk involved. If this fight were to go the distance, like Lipe against Dennis Boistoff, then understand you would lose it all. I'm expecting a knockout. Let me also say this too. The hedge I've just proposed, just understand. All we're trying to do really is to take a flyer on Lipe by KO. Right? It's a long shot play. 
If Vladimir Klitschko destroys him, you break even. If it's Klitschko by KO, you lose nothing. Right? And so all you're trying to do here is to take a flyer on Lipe. If Lipe gets inside and closes the show, then for every $17 you bet, right, 16 and 1, you're netting a $6 profit on a fight that if you were just to take a winner, right, looks unbettable. Just food for thought. Take a look at it. Let me also point out, too, that Lipe knows the world stage. He traveled away from his homeland to Europe to fight hometown favorite Dennis Boistoff. Right, I want you to look at the early part of that fight. You learn a lot about a fighter when he's on foreign soil fighting a favorite that he's supposed to lose to. Lipe's not having it. You know the personality type. He's in there, couldn't care less where they're fighting. He's going for it from the opening bell. Boystov comes in with attitude, with swag. That only lasts a few rounds, right? I believe Lipe is mentally tough. Let me also point out, too, that that fight has some irregularities. If you remember the Ali-Henry Cooper fight, right, where Ali gets knocked down by Henry Cooper, then suddenly... The tape on his gloves loose. By the way, Angelo Dundee, shortly before his death, who was working Ali's corner, admits that that was a ruse by the corner. They had it set up, so if they needed to play that card, if Ali was in trouble, they could do something with the glove to make the tape become loose. Let me just tell you, Lipe gets boy stuff in trouble. Boy stuff's corner, well... I don't want to make accusations here I can't back up. Let's just say this. Curiously, when Boy stops in trouble several times during the fight, the tape on his gloves becomes loose. Several times, right? Times that seemed awfully fortuitous for Dennis Boystoff. Let me also say this too. As you watch the fight, Lipe dominates Boystoff, dominates him. Then it's interesting because as they read the scores, Lipe looks at his corner, shakes his head, thinking he's about to be ripped off. For the record, he won that fight by wide decision. Right? You're talking about a mentally tough guy with really a great uppercut inside. It's a great uppercut. Let me also point out, too, that if I were Lipe, just food for thought, I would actually think about not necessarily always throwing that uppercut up at the guy's chin. I would think about aiming it this way at times to hit the guy in the solar plexus, right? You hit a guy in the solar plexus right, and that guy might be finished, right? I believe Vladimir Klitschko's lack of an inside game provides long shots. Alex Lipe with a remote chance here. And because the casinos don't seem to recognize that, I like Klitschko by KO hedged with Lipe by KO. I'll concede that I personally see no way, short of Lipe getting multiple knockdowns in the fight, for Lipe to win the fight by decision. I do feel, though, that Lipe can get low enough to at least get around Vladimir Klitschko's jab at times. I don't believe he's going to stay outside like Sultan Abragamov did several fights ago, several years ago. I actually think Lipe is a guy who won't be content just fighting the heavyweight champ. I think he's going to come in, since the opportunity of a lifetime, push the issue to get inside. I'm expecting fireworks. I'm expecting someone to get dropped. While I personally think Klitschko wins by knockout, my goal here in gambling is to benefit if Lipe gets the knockout. Right? But again, understand the risk. You lose it all 
if this fight goes the distance. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And if you're one of these people who believes that Vladimir Klitschko is invincible, then please, in the comment section to this video, explain to us what happened in the purity fight. Explain to us why he didn't give Corey Sanders a rematch. Explain to us not only what happened in the Lehman Brewster fight, but why after the fight, Vladimir Klitschko was claiming he had been drugged. Right? Explain to us how Sam Peter was able to knock him down multiple times. Right? At the end of the day, there are no unbeatable fighters. Right? If the world wants to think there are, great. Depending on the odds, I'll be there betting on the other guy or at least betting on a scenario where the fight's competitive. Right? For me, Alex Lipe's inside game, his ability to throw a pretty good right uppercut, gives him a long shot chance in this fight. Right? I think any betting scenario that you come up with has to include Lipe by KO. Right? I like Klitschko by KO, the likeliest outcome, hedged with Lipe by KO. Because of these odds, you can actually hedge the play. The Klitschko side can be a break even. If Lipe shocks the world, you'll be the guy in line laughing after the fight. Thanks for stopping by.